This is your one-stop shop for motocross news from around the world. Hello, and welcome back to the Vital MX pre-game show. I'm your host, Lewis Phillips, as per usual. And remember, interesting stuff happens everywhere. And we will endeavor to shine a light on all of that. First, this week, let's take a look at a milestone that was reached in St. Louis. And no, I'm not talking about Eli Tomac's 100th podium in the 450SX class. Instead, let's shine a light on Cooper Webb's 60th podium in the Premier class. Webb has now hit 60 podiums in 118 starts, so his percentage is a little more than 50%. In comparison, Ken Roxon has 68 podiums in 143 starts. So the comparison between the two, who have been involved in a tug of war of sorts throughout their career, is rather interesting. Remember that Webb has now moved clear of Roxon in the win column. He is two ahead on 24 versus Roxon's 22. But Roxon still has the advantage as far as podiums go. Will Webb? leapfrog Roxon in that category eventually? Will Webb hit 100 podiums like Eli Tomac? It's an interesting conversation because although Webb isn't one of the younger guys like Jet Lawrence, Chase Sexton, he's also younger than the veterans group of Tomac, Anderson, Barsha. So he's kind of forgotten about and there seems to be some confusion about how much longer he could race for. I would expect to see him for a while yet, four to five years perhaps, and so there is room for him to perhaps hit the big 100. Now, a lot happened in St. Louis. Of course, there was controversy aplenty. First, let's look at Justin Barsha's apology to Jet Lawrence after the incident on the first lap of the final main event. Now, Barsha took to Instagram on Monday to share his thoughts on the incident. He made it clear that it was a racing incident, there was no ill will, and said that he felt horrible for what happened. In fact, he even considered pulling off. When he knows dirt bikes knows that was a racing incident and no, not intentional by any means. Um, yeah, it was such a bummer. Um, early on in the, in the laps, um, you're just racing hard and came in super hot, jet cut down and it was a wrong place, wrong time situation. Not only did Barsha apologize on Instagram, he raised his hand immediately after the incident, stopped next to Jet after the race, and then went to the Honda HRC truck in the pits around 20 minutes after the final checkered flag. So Barsha was clearly quite adamant that he wanted to get his point across, but this was just a racing incident, a mistake. There was no intention there whatsoever. But how is Jet Lawrence? Well, he finished the final main event, a tremendous effort, still quite incredible that he managed to get up and do that. Yes, um, everyone was obviously really upset um, on our crew as well. It was just a bummer. It took, took you know, us all out of, out of the race, so that was absolutely disappointing. In a statement from Honda HRC, Jet Lawrence commented that he had struck a nerve in his arm. He had a bad Charlie's horse, and so he struggled with feeling in his arm for a little while after the incident. That would explain why he was so slow to get up. It seems, however, that there is no broken bone, there is no fracture, there is nothing to be concerned about from that angle. So the weekend off has come at a perfect time. He should be able to rest his battered and bruised body and come out swinging in Boston. I would not be surprised if he comes out with intent. Of course, he has now lost two races in a row, and although he's a rookie, that's quite incredible considering his form as of late. A major talking point in St. Louis was, of course, the abundance of penalties that were handed out in the second main event. Chase Sexton, Jet Lawrence, Cooper Webb, Jason Anderson, and Aaron Plessinger were all docked for jumping on a Red Cross flag. All of those riders, except for Anderson, were handed a two-position penalty. Jason Anderson received a four-position penalty because he jumped on the flag twice. A lot of us honestly didn't see it. Um, but like Hunter said, you, you got to make that decision when you do see it. And I think for me, once I finally saw it, I was, you know, a foot from going off the takeoff. A lot of debate this week about whether the flag was actually visible, whether it was in a good place or not. Let us know what you think in the comments, but these penalties are now final. So there will be no retractions, no additional penalties. This is the final results 
More rider updates from St. Louis. Adam Cincerello crashed on lap one of the first main event and obviously did not return to the racetrack. He, again, like Jet, has not sustained any broken bones or fractures. His ankle was just so badly swollen that he could not get his boot back on. Some rest should ensure that he is able to race in Foxborough. There is, doesn't seem to be much concern about that. Stay tuned as well because Adam is set to make an announcement before we next drop the gate. And also there has been some concern about Michael Moserman who had two big crashes on Saturday. One was in practice and the other was lap one of the second main event when he got landed on on the first Supercross triple. There was initially some serious concern there but he is okay. Uh, battered and bruised again that seems to be a theme this week. I would imagine that there is some internal pressure for him to show a flash of form before 2024 Monster Energy Supercross wraps up. Now, there was more racing over the weekend, not just Monster Energy Supercross. MXGP was on a weekend off, so the various national championships kicked into action across Europe. Most notably, the second round of the Dutch championship was run, and Jeffrey Hurlings maintained his perfect streak with 1-1 one, one results. He beat out Roman Fevre, who went 2-2, two, two, exactly like the first round. Hurlings had an advantage of nine seconds in one moto and three in the other. It was a sand track, of course, Oldebrook, and what awaits the MXGP athletes this weekend is a bottomless sand track in Sardinia that most consider even more treacherous than Lommel. Does this mean that Hurlings will return to the top step of the podium? A podium seems to be a foregone conclusion, but will he stop Prado's run? Time will tell, it should be a great weekend of racing. And also a round of the French Championship was run and won by Maxime Desprey, who went 1-2 to beat out Valentin Guillaume, who went 2-3 across the two motos. So there's a weekend off in Monster Energy Supercross now, but fear not, there is so much racing going on around the world. Round three of MXGP will be run in Rio Lozado, as mentioned, the Australian Championship will run their second round this weekend also, so there is still plenty of ways to get your motocross fix, and if you don't know how to follow those series, we'll be back next week with more updates and storylines. A final note before we go. All of the fill-in riders rumoured last week for MXGP, Todd Kellett for Factory Yamaha, Rowan van der Mostijk for HRC, and Brian Bogers for Fantic Factory Racing, all of those have now been confirmed, so expect to see those riders in action this weekend. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening. I have been your host, Lewis Phillips. I appreciate all of your positive comments and support as we attempt to get this feature off of the ground. We will see you next week.